Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. May 31st, 2018. The Kuna Report is powered by Kelly Financial Services. Cleaning up your financial bull. Get the peace of mind that you deserve at Kelly Financial Services. Should Samantha B go the way of Roseanne Barr? Okay, my friends. You want to see liberal hypocrisy on classic display, Exhibit A. I've got a column up. I'm urging all of you to read it. It's up at WRKO.com slash Kuhner, K-U-H-N-E-R. The left's, the lynching of Roseanne Barr. The left's blatant double standard when it comes to liberal and conservatives espousing bigotry. And I got to tell you, my friends... It's almost like they perfectly queued it up for my column. Samantha B. yesterday, I, frankly, I've heard of her. I've never watched her show. She's like many typical anti-Trump liberal comedians. She's vile. She's disgusting. She's odious. She thinks that being coarse and obscene and have a, a profanity-laced monologue is somehow uh, funny. It isn't. It's just disgusting. It's just, frankly, repulsive. Well, even by her standards, she outdid herself last night when she, on her show, on TBS, which, by the way, is owned by Time Warner, which is the parent company of CNN, Okay, the Clinton News Network, or as I like to call it, the crap news network. Well, there was Samantha B railing against Ivanka Trump. And in particular, she was extremely upset that how dare Trump now have an immigration policy that separates illegal mothers, illegal immigrants who are mothers, from their children. And so she urges... Ivanka Trump, in her words, to put on a very tight outfit for her father, have a very short skirt, because, you know, daddy really wants to have sex with his daughter. He's, he, he, he wants to engage in incest. Ha, 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 ha. And that she should then tell her father, as a mother to a mother, stop separating illegal alien kids from their mothers. But listen to how she says it. Unbelievable. Roll it, Brittany. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you <laughs> He listens to you. Put on something tight and low cut and tell your father to stop it. Tell him it was an Obama thing and see how it goes, okay? We'll be right back. Uh, um... You feckless C. Okay? You know, referring to a woman's genitals, forgive me. The C word. Not the P word. The C word. You feckless C. That's what she called Ivanka. Now, before I even get to that, to me, what's almost, almost as outrageous, not as outrageous, but almost as outrageous, and I'm telling you, she's making the point of my column. My column is the most feared column among the left right now because I exposed their utter hypocrisy and double standard. When it came to Roseanne Barr, and in general when it comes to supposedly policing racism, sexism, misogyny, bigotry, whatever you want. She's actually saying that the President of the United States wants to sleep with his daughter. That's the implication. So put on something nice, tight, and sexy, because, you know, your father really likes it when you do that. And then, you feckless, there, there was no insult in that first one, so I don't know why it's bleeped out, but anyway. You feckless C. Now, let me tell you this. To the NSA, if you're listening, I'm serious. To the FBI, to the CIA, you've been listening on my calls, monitoring my texts, listening to my, reading my emails. I have never called a woman, any woman, that. To me, I honestly cannot think of a more vile, despicable thing to say about any woman than to call her the C-word. 
And I don't care, honestly, whether you're left, right, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat. I want to ask you now, in all honesty, how the hell is Roseanne Barr's tweet a joke, a bad joke, whatever it may be, about Valerie Jarrett being the love child between the Muslim Brotherhood and the Planet of the Apes, which is a fictional science fiction movie. How is that in any way worse than what Samantha Bee just did? To me, it's the exact opposite. To me, that tweet is nothing. Roseanne Barr's tweet is nothing compared to what Samantha B used last night on TBS. I Look, honestly, I'd much rather be compared to some fictional, as a gorilla, whatever, fictional science fiction movie than for my wife or my daughter or anybody that, Brittany, people that work with me here, to be called the C-word. And here's the other difference. First of all, you want to talk about sexism? You want to talk about misogyny? You want to talk about utterly degrading women? This is not degrading? This is not utterly... You, you want to talk about bigoted? This is not utterly sexist and misogynistic? But more than that, that wasn't on her Twitter account. That wasn't her with her friends and followers uh, going back and forth and, you know, uh, ha, 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 ha. Well, you know what I think Ivanka Trump really is? Ivanka Trump is really a feckless, you know what? That was in public on her show as part of her act. That was deliberate and premeditated. That wasn't even said on her computer, on her private Twitter account. That was said as part of her show. Now... You want to talk about liberal hypocrisy and double standards? This is it. I will bet you the best freaking steak at the Hanover Street Shop House. Nothing is going to happen to Samantha B. Nothing. She won't even have to apologize. Okay? Not even as Roseanne profusely apologized. No, 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 no. Not only does she's keeping her job, she's keeping her salary, she's keeping her show, and not only that... I said this before, I, I, I actually went on Twitter, and I said, notice, no liberals have condemned Samantha B so far. Where's Hollywood? Silence. Where's the mainstream media? Silence. Where's CNN? They're owned by the same parent company. Silence. Where's MS left BC? Silence. Where's the Boston Globe? Silence. So, as I point out in my column, if you're a rabid anti-Trump leftist, i.e. like Samantha B, you can be as bigoted, as sexist, as misogynistic, as vile, as odious, as disgusting as you can possibly be. Nothing happens to you. There are no consequences. There are no standards. You're never held accountable. But if you're a conservative, and I'll tell you, as I point out in my column, let me tell you the real reason why Roseanne Barr was essentially fired and her show was canceled. It had nothing to do with that tweet. That tweet was the pretext. That tweet was the justification to go after her. What they couldn't stand about her and what they had to do, do and defend at all costs was they could not allow somebody who had openly voted for Trump to have a popular sitcom show that actually made it okay to like the president. That actually made it okay in the popular culture to agree with the president and support his agenda. That was her real crime. And they waited and they waited and the moment that tweet was out, boom, they pounced like a pack of wolves. Here is the difference. Today, it is Roseanne Barr. But for all you conservatives out there, tomorrow it may be you. Because the left is now in the saddle in terms of the commanding heights of our culture. What you're seeing now is the rise of liberal fascism. You are seeing now left-wing censorship and leftist intolerance, whereby the left 
can say the most vile, racist, bigoted things imaginable. Whether it's Samantha B, whether it's Joy Behar, whether it's Whoopi Goldberg, whether it's Alec Baldwin, whether it's Michelle Wolf, whether it's Joy Reid, and I'm going to get to her a little bit later, it doesn't matter. They get to keep their jobs. They get to keep their salaries. They get to keep their shows. But if you're a conservative, it's the Spanish Inquisition all over again. And so my question to you now is this. On simple grounds of fairness, should Samantha B be fired and should her show be canceled? I say if it's good enough for Roseanne Barr, it's certainly good enough for Samantha B. I want her gone. Agree? Disagree? 617-266-6868. And to the women out there, final double barrel question. The C word. In all honesty, have you ever been called the C word? And is there anything more vile or disgusting than to call a woman a C? Your reaction, your calls, next. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you He listens to you. Put on something tight and low cut and tell your father to stop it. Tell him it was an Obama thing and see how it goes. Is that funny? Because I honestly don't think it's funny. Samantha B. now, uh, the liberal anti-Trump comedian, has her own show, TBS. Uh, The parent company, Time Warner, which owns CNN, called Ivanka Trump a feckless C., The term used for a woman's, the very vulgar term, despicable term for a woman's female genitalia, forgive me. Um, So far, liberals, the silence has been deafening. CNN, MSNBC, the major networks, New York Times, Washington Post, nobody is calling for her to apologize, never mind to be fired. If you want to see Exhibit A, As I point out in my column, the lynching of Roseanne Barr, which is up at WRKO.com slash Cooner, K-U-H-N-E-R. Click on menu, Cooner's Corner. There is the column. I show the blatant hypocrisy and double standard prevalent among the cultural left and in Hollywood. Here it is. The president's daughter is vilified in the most obscene, sick way imaginable. A misogynistic, sexist comment if there ever was one. Nothing. Nothing. She's glorified as a hero of the resistance. Roseanne Barr, for a tweet, however despicable, you want to call it racist? Fine. Racist. Okay, racist. Nothing in terms of its impact and viciousness like what Samantha B. did last night. Roseanne Barr today is out on the street. The show has been canceled. Samantha B., so far, nothing. And my prediction, she will have her show, have her job. She won't even issue an apology. 617-266-6868. So let me ask you, is there a blatant double standard? When it comes to liberals and conservatives in the culture, when it comes to racism, bigotry, sexism, whatever, number one. Number two, should Samantha B, following now the Roseanne Barr precedent, should Samantha B lose her show and be fired? I say what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Agree? Disagree? Gary in California. You're up next. Go ahead, Gary. Hey, Jeff, uh, uh, buddy, I love you in a non samantha B <laughs> kind of way. <laughs> I, I, re- I really do, and with, with no bad jokes either. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. What's on your mind, my friend? Well, Jeff, listen, uh, I'm calling because I, I don't think people want to do anything about this problem. I'm going to say something very controversial. This is directed at conservatives you know, included. We don't want to do anything about the problem in getting the getting rid of the Samantha Bees of the world. You know why? Because 
Churchill said that social did not exist without a propaganda machine behind it. And I've been on the show with you before, and I mentioned this to you. And how do we get rid of the propaganda machine? The propaganda machine was created because we don't have term limits in Congress. That created the power vacuum and the black hole that we have in Congress, that, that, that swamp that we have, which created the propaganda machine, which created Samantha B. So why aren't we talking about getting to the root cause of the problem by having two limits in Congress to get rid of, to get rid of these people that have been in office for 20, 30, 40 years, and they're getting rich off of us. But nobody wants to do anything about the situation. All we want to do is just complain, complain, complain about it. Uh, no, Gary, look, you make, you, Gary, you make a very good point, and thank you for that call. Look, we have to clean up the swamp, and term limits is part of it. But there's something going on even beyond politics. Okay, you're right. Look, politically, we have to change things, and I think term limits is, is, is crucial. It's fundamental. But there's a bigger issue here, and I think it's this. Our culture has now become so rotten. I think it has become so indoctrinated by progressives. You, t you look at the schools, you look at the elementary schools, the public schools, the high schools, the colleges. They, they think Samantha Bee is funny. They think this garbage is funny. And what you now see, this is very dangerous. That's why I point out in my column, it's the rise of liberal fascism. You are now seeing a culture, a monolithic popular culture, whether it's anchored in Hollywood, in the media, on television, in academia, whereby it is okay to target and destroy conservatives. Whereby for conservatives, there is no freedom of speech. There is no freedom of expression. Look, this is not to defend what Roseanne Barr said. Look, I said it yesterday. I'm going to say it again. Really, I'm bearing my soul to you. I never care for Roseanne Barr. Honestly, I never did. I didn't like her show 20 years ago. I didn't watch the show when it was rebooted. Nothing personal. I just didn't care for her comedy, okay? And I know she said a lot of crazy, wild things over the last couple decades. But that's not the point. The point is, her career has been destroyed. She has been silenced. Her show has been canceled, yet when liberals engage in much more vitriolic, virulent, odious, nasty rhetoric, comments, that put, as I say in my column, that make Roseanne Barr's tweet look like Mother Teresa, freedom of speech, baby, freedom of expression, baby, well, no, uh, Samantha B has the right to her opinion, she can say whatever she wants. Michelle Wolf can make fun of aborted babies. That's funny. Ha ha ha. And they're yucking it up. Alec Baldwin can compare Donald Trump to an ape or a gorilla. Uh, Wanda Sykes, as I pointed out in my column, the, one of the producers of the Roseanne show, a show, a rabid liberal lesbian feminist who hates Trump to the core in her comedy routine. Compare Donald Trump to an orangutan. That's, that, that's her joke. She thinks that's funny. So, Joy Behar can be an anti-Christian bigot. Whoopi Goldberg can call President Trump a white supremacist. And all Trump supporters, all of them, racists and bigots, they go to show. Nothing happens to them. Nothing. So, you see, you can be bigoted against whites. You can be bigoted against Christians. You can be bigoted against uh, working class people. You can be bigoted against rural folks, entire classes and categories of people. You can demonize them, slander them, smear them, puh, spit on them. No problem. No problem. You say one thing that crosses the line of political correctness and you're a conservative, they cut your throat professionally from ear to ear. That's not freedom. That's liberal fascism. Samantha B is going to be lionized. Roseanne Barr is out on the street. Now you tell me, is that freedom? Is that fair? Or is that a despicable double standard that nobody can defend? Liberals are defending the indefensible. Samantha B must go. Period. Full stop. Judy in Waltham. You're up next. Go ahead, Judy. 
Hi, I want to go with a, a, a lot of steps more than California. I have read the broadside on several. I've read it. The one reason why I don't take a subscription is I know these facts, but I don't know what to do about them. And there's a hypocrisy. When anyone attacks someone who is vile and vicious, we sit there and write another column. I don't know what to do about it. If I knew the people who sponsor the program, I would start doing something about it. We just sit there tongue-tied. I know I'm the only one in my family for Trump. If I try to talk to them, they shut me down. But if I go at it where it hurts, it would make a difference. Last night, I, I don't have a TV, but I was scanning Facebook, which I do when I'm really irritated. And the cast of Roseanne was against her. Why are you punishing us? Let her go. She's not the whole show. They should have been saying this isn't fair. But they took the other side. That's what I have to say. Judy, you know what we're going to do? I am going to give out the number to TBS. All of you can call. I'm urging all of you to call and very simply say we want her gone. We want her gone. If Roseanne Barr and the entire, remember, 200 people lost their jobs. It wasn't just Roseanne. The producers, the, the camera people, the, the writers, everybody. If 200 people are out on the street because of one tweet by Roseanne Barr, then the same thing should apply to Samantha B. and she needs to go. So not only should we call up TBS, I'll even go one step further. Cut the cord. Get rid of cable. Get rid of cable. You want to punish ESPN? You want to punish TBS? You want to punish Disney? Very simple. They make money off of the cable subscriptions. Cut your cable. You cut your cable, you hit them right where it hurts, in the pocketbook. Okay, my friends, President Trump is visiting Texas after the recent school shooting in Santa Fe. Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. He has all of those details. What are they, Evan? Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Twelve thirty-six here on the Great WRKO. Okay, the latest liberal outrage. It doesn't end. After demanding that Roseanne Barr be canceled, and within thirteen hours of her tweet, she lost her job. The show was canceled. Samantha B, a rabid anti-Trump liberal comedian, on her show, not in a Twitter account, on her show, called Ivanka Trump the C word. Okay, referring to her female genitalia. Not one liberal commentator has condemned the comments. Nothing is going to happen to Samantha B. Forget being fired. She won't even have to issue an apology. You want to see liberal hypocrisy at its worst? This is it. Now, my friends, uh, we were going to give out the number to TBS, which is the station that she's on, the, the channel that she's on. However, you're going to get this. Roll it, Brittany. TBS viewer line is not answering. This mailbox is full and cannot accept new messages. To disconnect, press 1. There you go. So basically, they don't want to hear from you. They're just, forget it. We're gonna we're sticking with Samantha Roseanne Barr's gotta go. Samantha B, don't worry, she's got a job for life. So call the parent company. Let's see if they're going to try to avoid us there or block us out there. Uh, Turner headquarters, which, by the way, also owns CNN. So I want to see how CNN plays this. Oh, they're going to defend her. Guaranteed they're going to defend her. 404-827-1700. Call 404-827-1700. What I would say is, if Roseanne Barr had to go, Samantha Bee's got to go. Period. Unless you guys are a bunch of hypocrites. Pick your poison. What do you want? Free speech or you want to penalize everybody? It's up to you now. You liberals created this world. Now we're just trying to live in it. 617-266-6868. Seth in Quincy. You're up next. Thanks for holding. Go ahead, Seth. I, this, this whole thing is laughable in the sense that I'm going to... I'm gonna 
state out and say I'm, I'm an independent. My, my liberal or conservative views depend on the issue. And watching people trying to compare Roseanne Barr, comparing a woman who Mark Dice said was black with quotation marks because he didn't believe she was black, Roseanne went into a territory that is never tolerated to compare to Joy Behar, who grew up, I believe, Irish Catholic. I don't know if she's in the Christian or the Catholic camp today, but making a white Christian, making fun of a white Christian, saying he hears Jesus talk to him, making that the same. And if I'm not, if I remember right, RKO used to play a bit uh, promoting your show where you went straight out mocking a caller's accent. So again, if you want, while the caller was on the phone, by the way, so, I mean, if you want them all to go, how far do you want to go? Is mocking the accent of a foreign-born American citizen where the line, where you want to draw it? Or do you want to sit there and try to compare someone who went on a racial angle such as Roseanne, well, which uh, was unnecessary and needed, and compare... Well, that doesn't matter. Christian well, that's irrelevant. It does. You're, you're making... No, honestly, you're making one... Um, you're, you're making one straw man argument after another. Number one... Whether it's a white Christian on a white... By the way, Joy Behar is not a Christian, okay? But that, let that go. Whether it's a white Christian or on a white Christian, it doesn't matter. Racism is racism. Bigotry is bigotry. It doesn't matter the color of the skin that the person it comes from. Now, what she said about Mike Pence was one of the most vile, bigoted, actually anti-Christian, bigoted things you can possibly say. And I'll tell you exactly what she said, because you need to get it through your thick head. What she said was, Mike Pence is mentally ill because he talks to Jesus. And Christians, by extension, are mentally ill. Now, I'm telling you, that is one of the most vile forms of anti-Christian bigotry imaginable. It's sickening. Now, if she said that about Muslims, she's gone. She's gone. So, she said it about Christians... They cheered. She's lionized. But I won't stop there. I can go on all day with the hypocrisy. How many times have they referred to Donald Trump as a gorilla, as an ape, as an, uh, uh, an orangutan? Let me tell you what's even more offensive. You want to know the most offensive thing ever said? Comparing somebody to a Nazi. Comparing to somebody to Adolf Hitler. You know why? Because my family, half of them were annihilated by the Nazis. The worst thing you can call me or anybody is Hitler or a Nazi. That's what the left does on a regular basis. I'd much rather be compared to some gorilla, fictional gorilla character on Planet of the Apes than to be compared to a mass murderer with the blood of millions of people on his hands. That's how sick and deranged liberals have become. So I believe in free speech. See, that's where you and I disagree, Seth. I believe that you don't destroy somebody based on one tweet. A racist is somebody who's racist for their entire career. There's a pattern. This was one despicable tweet, a stupid, sick joke, but nothing worse than what Michelle Wolf did or Samantha B said. I could go on. But instead, you guys stand there like the Inquisition with the thought police and you decide who professionally lives and who professionally dies. That's not freedom. Now, you want these rules? You set these rules? No problem. Now, I want Samantha be gone. Hello? There you go. That's, they hang up. Because you prevent them, you present them with the overwhelming evidence, they don't know what to say. So, that's what they try to do. And I'll, I'll even go further. I'll even go further. That's all these left-wingers do now. Jeff, you're a Nazi. Jeff, you're Hitler. Do you know how ignorant and stupid you are to even say something like that? By the way, Trump is a German-American. He's half Scottish, half German in his ancestry. That's a slur on Trump. You're saying that what? Just because he's of German ancestry, he's an inbred Nazi? I mean, we can play this game till the cows come home. The fact of the matter is, you know what Hitler did? Here's what Hitler did. Get it through your thick head once and for all. He seized power, he killed all the journalists, he banned all the political parties, he banned all opposition, he burned down the parliament, 
And then after he did that, he began to brand Jews, gypsies, among others, as enemies of the regime. And then after declaring war on all of his neighbors, okay, and killing 50 million people, he shipped 6 million Jews, 4 million Catholics, onto trains to slave labor and death camps. That's what Hitler did. For you, the left... As they regularly do, and I, you want me to cite them? I got them. Alec Baldwin, Whoopi Goldberg, I could run down the whole list. To regularly compare President Trump to a Nazi or Adolf Hitler is not just sick. It's an historical abomination. To me, I'll be honest with you, if I'm running a channel, you know, I would have a list. There's just certain words you know what? Shut up. They're not funny. Don't use them. The C word is one of them. The F word is another one. The B word is another one. And calling people Nazis, as the left always does, is another one. There was only one Adolf Hitler. Nothing Donald Trump has done comes even remotely close to what that murderous evil madman did. But you left-wingers, it's first Bush was the Hitler, and now Trump is the Hitler. It's Hitler, Hitler, Hitler. Let me tell you who the real racists are. You. WRKO. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. You know, Ivanka, that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you Yeah, don't worry, nothing's happening to Samantha B. Don't worry about that. 617-266-6868. Okay, my friends, join Relay for Life and help the American Cancer Society fund cancer research, free rides to chemo, free places to stay near hospitals. Register or donate today at RelayForLife.org. All right, my friends, let's, um, TBS is not taking any calls because they want to protect Samantha B. Let's give Turner Headquarters, which owns TBS and CBS, uh, CNN, forgive me, owns CNN and TBS, let's give them a call. 404-827-1700. The argument is very simple. If Roseanne Barr had to be fired, Samantha B. now needs to be fired. Misogyny and sexism have no place in public discourse, just as you claim a racist tweet has no place in public discourse. Fair is fair now, guys. 617-266-6868. Agree, disagree, lines are loaded. David in Northborough. You're up next. Go ahead, David. Hey, good afternoon. How you doing? Tim? I'm great. How are you, David? I don't know if you remember uh, back in uh, 2010, maybe, every Monday night, Jake Williams Jr. used to come on to the NFL and say, are you ready for some football? Yes. And then he went on Fox and, I think it was Fox and Friends, and he called Barack Obama a Nazi, and he never did... Monday Night Football again. He was fired instantly. Uh, David, absolutely brilliant. I mean, you're dead on. You're, I mean, that's what I mean. Look, you, you could do sh three-hour shows for a month. Say, uh, a conservative said this about Obama, or in this case about Valerie Jarrett, the cult of Obama. Boom, fired. A liberal said something about Trump or Ted Cruz or George W. Bush, or a Republican, or a conservative, nothing. I mean, it's, it's, the hypocrisy is so big, you can drive a Mack truck through it. And that's why that guy, Seth, and that's why I think these liberals are all a bunch of cowards. They try to call up the show, and it's always with this somehow, you're a racist undertone. Right, always, you know, oh, you made fun of somebody's accent. Oh, my God, take them off the air. Oh, 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 oh. We can make fun of people, but you can't. Oh, 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 oh. And you challenge them, and you just hit them with a tsunami of facts, and like the cowards that they are, they hang up and they run away. 
You can check out my column at wrko.com slash Cooner. I'm urging all of you, please read it. It exposes the left's hypocrisy on this issue. Uh, go to menu, Cooner's Corner, the lynching of Roseanne Barr. And I compare what Roseanne Barr said to what so many other liberal celebrities and comedians have said and say, where's the fairness? Where's the freedom of speech? It's hypocrisy and double standards through and through. Andy in Nebraska, you're up next. Go ahead, Andy. Nobody in, Jeff. Andy, how are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. You're forgetting a couple of important examples. Jimmy Kimmel played Carl Malone in blackface, which is infinitely more racist than a bad joke. Didn't hear Seth mention anything about that. And James Clapper, uh, James Clapper, remember, remember he said that Russians have in their DNA, DNA that, uh, that trend to just turn everything to hell? Yes, that, that they have spying in their DNA. Oh, God, the anti-Russian bigotry of the liberals is insane. I see that in my life quite often. From sh- trying to shoot fireworks at my girlfriend, her girlfriend, to verbally abusing them. It doesn't happen very long, very long when they deal with me, but still, the, the hypocrisy is insane. And with Samantha B, I couldn't tell if that was that was a so-called comedy show or comedy show or a, or a porn conversation. I mean, my God! Ugh. Well, no, Andy. Look, I, thank you for that call. You really put your finger on something. What passes now for comedy or commentary among liberals and the left today? It's liberal porn. It's political pornography. That's what this is. Here, do me a favor, Brittany. Play it again. That's a screed. Like, that's just, hey, let's, it's like, it's like the minute of hate in 1984. Let's just call Trump or his family members as many vile names as possible. Get it out of our system. Come on. It's like a, it's, it's, it's like a form of pornography. Like, uh, almost like mental pornography. Let's just so degrade him and dehumanize him. And we think that's funny. Roll you know, Ivanka, Britain. that's a beautiful photo of you and your child, but let me just say, one mother to another, do something about your dad's immigration practices, you f- Wow, that's funny? That's funny? I know many liberals find that funny. I don't find that funny. Jerry on the Cape, go ahead, Jerry. Comrade. Comrade, how you are, my friend? I have a message for you from Yuri. He says you will understand. The speaker is a raving lunatic, (laughs) comrade. (laughs) Jeff, God bless you. You're a patriot. And I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. You're a lion for the truth. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Jeff, this is all selective, politically correct speech. They want to stifle us. You know, Jeff, you've been talking a lot about the Nazis and the communists. They weren't fin- the Nazis weren't finished at Nuremberg, you know. They were alive and well along with the communists here in this country. And the- Jeff, they're using classic Lenin tactics on us. They're projecting onto us. They, pro- they show their hand every time. And they have a history of doing this. Keith Olbermann, Colbert, all those people you mentioned, Jeff. And this whole thing with Roseanne and Samantha B is just a big distraction. But one good thing Roseanne did do, and I don't know if you noticed this on the Internet yesterday, Jeff, it was on fire about Valerie Bowman Jarrett. No, I I agree with you, Jerry. Look, it it, it kind of flushed her out. And she's being exposed now for the traitor that she was and the traitor that she is. Arthur in Chestnut Hill, you're up next. Go ahead, Arthur. Well, uh, I agree uh, with uh, Jerry there, Uh, the communists have taken over our colleges, and uh, and they, and this is not. First of all, this is not a media. This is a propaganda machine, okay? And they and and, and they've had control of it for so long. I mean, to begin with, I don't see it. You know, the more I thought about it, uh, Jeff, I don't see what's so racist about the Planet of the Apes. Uh, growing up, my two favorite uh, characters uh, that I loved was Mighty Joe Young and King Kong. You know, they were they were apes. Well, what's wrong with that? You know, uh, we, you know, and they've made reruns of the movies. That, that that's how much they're beloved in this country. And the fact of the matter is, yeah, you, you, you know, 
we we've got to, we've got to do something about it. Uh, you know, there's no sense of decency anymore. That's that's filth that came out of her mouth. Okay, that's all. You know, back in the fifties and sixties, you couldn't talk like that. Uh, you, you know, uh, we we had uh, censorship, and and now that I'm thinking back, I think we ought to go back to a little bit of censorship because that's hate speech. That's that that they spew out day after day and night after night, and nothing's going to happen to it. And now now that they got rid of Roseanne, you know, it's like throw, you know, it's like they throw it in your face. Because of Roseanne made made that comment, which, uh, as I've just proven, I don't think is so racist. Uh, uh, you know, they've now turned around and put Keith Olbermann back on the air, and that and that and I never even heard of that woman until I don't even know how she can get away with talking like that. I'm with you, Arthur. Well, look, look at Jamil Hill, ESPN, called Trump a white supremacist on a regular basis. ESPN is owned by who? Disney, same company that owns ABC. Jamel Hill didn't lose her job. She eventually lost her job but because the ratings were so bad. But she was going after Trump, going, I mean, she's an open black supremacist. Nothing happened to Jamel Hill. Keith Oberman, huge Trump hater, vile anti-conservative bigot. No problem. He's got his own show. They brought him back. Enough is enough. Okay, my friends. President Trump sounding hopeful about the diplomatic process with North Korea Evan Heidenrich is in the WRKO newsroom. Take it away, Evan.